Hi, my name's David. In the last video, we showed you how to create, fulfill, and record receiving payments from customers using cell transactions. We also showed you how to create deposits and how to create and apply debit notes as well as advanced payments. In this video, we're going to show you how to create journal entries, bank transfers, how to set up your month end closing, and we'll also take a look at the reports. So let's get started. Let's go to accounting. Let's click on journal entries. Inside here, you can see your journal entry number, entry date, entry type, reference document number, and if you click on the three dots, you can be able to print, delete, edit, set recurring, view custom fields. Of course, it's recorded by the system, meaning you did a sell or buy transaction. You won't be able to edit, delete, or set recurring here. You would actually have to go to the buy or sell tab and then delete the transaction itself or edit it there. So also inside here, we can expand all the records. So I can see all the transactions. We can also click on filter. So I can filter out recurring only, non-recurring only, and I can add custom fields here. Now let's go click on create and let's create a normal journal entry. Inside here, I can select the currency. For example, if I want United States dollars, I can select the journal date. I can say this is included in the tax report by clicking here. And I can just go here and actually change the exchange rate. I can select the account name, put in the amount, and I can put in the credit amount here as well. You'll notice if the debit amount and credit amount are not the same, you'll see unbalanced amount and the system won't let you save, which is a good thing. Credit and debit should always tally for a journal entry. So now it's all tallied, everything looks good, you can click save. And now I can see my normal journal entry has been created. I can click on the three dots and I can click here to set it recurring. So I can set it recurring for every year, month, week, or custom. If it's custom, how many days, months, and weeks. So for example, maybe every three weeks, I want this journal entry to be created. I want the first document date to be on the 6th of September. And I can set the ending date or I can click here, never ends, and I can save it. We also have the import option, so I can click here and click import, and I can import normal journal entries or fund transfer journal entries. So I'm going to show you normal journal entries. And if you have your own Excel file or CSV, you can just drag and drop it into here and click next. If you don't or want to use ours, just click here, download sample file, and let's open it. Now inside here, we can see our journal entry. Let me enable editing and let me increase the size. Now I can see the journal entry number. I can see the journal entry date. I can say whether or not it's included in the tax report, any memo. I can input the currency and I can update the currency exchange rate here. So that's all on the first line. Then it goes on to the second line. This is where it determines your accounts. So for example, accounts receivable, sales, sales. I can update the account name here if I want to, update the description, put in the debit or credit type and the amount. If everything looks good, I can save it and I can close it. After that, I can click here, browse or drag and drop the file. Click here and click open, click next. You can see the fields have all auto-mapped. And inside here is where you can select the date format. Now if the date format looks correct and everything looks good, I can click Next. I can go here and see if it looks correct. The key thing here is also this arrow key. So if you see some sort of error message and you don't know where it is, click this. It'll show you all your account names, the description, type, and amount. And I can update it directly on the screen, so for example. and everything looks good, I can click Submit. And you can see my journal entry has been created. I can also click on the three dots and view custom fields here. Click on the three dots here. I can edit, delete, print, set as recurring, or view custom fields. Next, let's click Create, and let's create a fund transfer. Inside here, you can select the journal entry date, the from, so this is your bank account. So, for example, if I select Bank of America, you'll see the currency changes to USD. 
if I change this to OCBC, you can see Singapore dollars. So currency is based upon the from bank. Then we can choose the transfer type, put in the reference number, input the amount. And then I can select two. So if I select DBS Bank, for example, since both of them are Singaporean banks and have Singaporean currency, the currency shows Singapore dollars. Now if I choose Bank of America, which is USD, you can see the currency stays Singapore dollars, but then asks me for an exchange rate. Now if I go up here and change this to a US bank, you can see the currency's changed to US dollars and then asked me to input exchange rate here. After that, I can type in a memo, attach a file, and I can save it. And now you can see my bank transfer has been created. But if you have a large amount of bank transfers, then you may not want to create them one by one, but maybe you want to import them. So you can click Import, click Fund Transfer Journal Entry, click Next. And if you have your own file, you can just drag and drop into here. Just please make sure it's CSV or XLSX. If not, you can download our sample file and open it. Now inside here, you're able to enable editing. We can scroll over here. Let's increase the size. And we can see the numbers here. For example, maybe I want to make this four. And update the journal entry date. Now I can see from what account, for example, bank, and this one's cash and bank. I can see the type check, bank transfer cash. I can see check number, check date, reference number, currency rate. So this is if it's a foreign currency. Reporting exchange rate, the amount, and any memo. After you update all this information, you can click save. You can close this. Then you can drag the file into here or click browse. You can select the file, click open, click next. Now you can see all the information is auto mapped. Now if you need to change the date, you can click here and update the date format. Now if the fields are not mapping or your label is different in your import file, you can click here and select the correct field. After that we can click next. You can make sure everything looks good. If you want to change anything on the screen, you can. For example, if you want to update the check number, update the check date, make sure everything looks good, then I can click Submit. And you can see my bank transfer journal entries have been created. Next, let's click on Accounting, and let's click on Financial Year Closing. Inside here, I can select the closing period. Is it monthly, quarterly, yearly, or custom? So you can select which one you want. I'm just going to select monthly. And this is where I can select the retained earnings account. And then I can click Save. After that, I can click on the settings and make changes if I want to. And I can also close a period. So I'm going to click here. I'm going to close August. Period name. And click OK. Then I just have to confirm journal entry adjustment has been completed, document revaluation completed, inventory adjustment completed, asset depreciation posting completed, recurring document generation completed, difference in opening balance adjustment completed. After I click all this, I can click Next. I can see the information here and I can save it. Journal entries have been posted. All documents are prevented from editing or creating for the selected closing period. So I can no longer create any transactions or documents for August. Yep, I got it. Next, let's go to reports. Inside here, you can see all your different financial reports, such as your profit and loss balance sheet, cash flow statement, general ledger, or trial balance. So if I click on profit and loss, I'll be able to see the information here. We have two types of accounting basis. We have cash and accrual, so you can choose which one you want. We have comparison mode, three years, six months, quarterly, or customized, based on your requirements. And we have filters. So I can add a custom filter here, for example, outlets, and I can select wrong, and I can save. And the information will filter out accordingly. I can also change the from and to date and reset the dates here, and I have the export option as well.
Under balance sheet, we also have the same ability for comparison mode. Filters, we can filter by custom fields. We can choose the accounting basis, is it accrual or cash? And we can select the as of date and export. This is the cash flow statement. You can see all the information here. You have the ability to do filters and I can filter by custom fields. I can go here and choose the from and to date. I can choose direct or non-direct. I can click here for mapping. So this is where I can map my different fields to which chart of accounts. For example, I need to map all these accounts here and I can also delete or add more based upon my requirements. After I'm done doing all this, I can click Save. I'm able to export my report. We also have the general ledger. So I can select the from date, to date, the accounting basis. I can select the account types. I can search for a specific account. I'm able to filter again by our custom fields. And I'm able to export. We have our trial balance. The key and most important thing is the difference in opening balance should always have nothing here. It should be blank. That means your trial balance is balancing. We can select here accrual or cash. We can select as of date. We have export options and we can also filter. We have our bank reconciliation summary, our reconciliation log report, our statement of accounts, statement of accounts for vendor. We have our tax reports, so this is your tax compliance. These reports change based upon which country you selected. Under purchases, we have our outstanding purchases, goods received report, purchase by contact, age payable, bill list, purchase order report, purchase by products, payment list, and our debit note report. We have our inventory, so our stock availability by warehouse, stock ledger, stock agent report, inventory valuation detail report, our sales return report, purchase return report, reserve stock report, build assembly, and stock valuation report. Under sales, we have our outstanding sales fulfillment report, age receivable, sales by contact, quotation report, invoice list, sales by product, receipt list, and credit notes. And that was a quick look at how to create journal entries, bank deposits, how to set up your month-end closing, and a quick look at reports.